So by this stage you should all be familiar with the periodic table of the elements. On this side of the periodic table we have the non-metals and the non-metals of course include hydrogen which sits over in group 1. Here we have the staircase and we have the metalloids and everything else on this periodic table including the lanthanides and the actinides are metals. Remember that these guys fit in to this group here. Remember that groups are the vertical columns and we've got group 1, group 2, we jump the gap, group 3, group 4, group 5, group 6, group 7 and group 8 or 0. And then we have periods, period 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Remember that the groups are in Roman numerals. Let's have a look at one of those elements. Remember it's periodic table of the elements and I've just taken magnesium here and I'm going to use a few other examples too. So magnesium, I said sulfur, um, sodium which is number 11 and we're going to look at chlorine. So magnesium, magnesium ribbon we've burnt before in class, remember the really bright light, you may have used shavings before in your reactions, um, uh, what are they called, pencil sharpeners are also made out of magnesium. The element is called magnesium and if you were to look under a microscope at magnesium and you could see the atoms lined up, it would look like this. The element consists of magnesium atoms and here we have 16 magnesium atoms that come together. Remember that element is only one type of atom, so the element is magnesium. If we look at this section here, we've now got four magnesium atoms. If we look at this one, we've now got one magnesium atom. This is your smallest building block. Remember an atom is the smallest building block. So this makes up this, which makes up this, which millions of them will make up a piece of ribbon that looks like this. Another example, sulphur. Compare that to magnesium that we just saw. The magnesium was a metal, it was lustrous, it was malleable, it was ductile, it was hard. We compare that to sulphur. Sulphur is a very brittle, dull powder. It also is a non-conductor or a very poor conductor of heat of electricity. The element here is sulphur, it's one of the elements in the periodic table and again it is made up of sulphur atoms. An element is only one type of atom, so you can see here they're all the same type of atom which are sulphur atoms. We look again, we take four sulphur atoms and this will be the one sulphur atom. So if I chop, 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 chop until I get down to one, the smallest building block will be the atom. Sodium, another metal, again, shiny, lustrous, ductile, solid at room temperature, conducts heat and electricity. The element's named sodium, and it's made up of only sodium atoms. So it's an element because it's only the one type of atom. Here we've got four sodium atoms and here we've got one sodium atom if we chop until we get to the smallest building block which is one atom. And chlorine. Chlorine is actually a non-metal and it's a gas at room temperature. It's sort of a yellowy type of gas. So the element is chlorine and chlorine the element is made up of chlorine atoms. It's an element because there's only one type of atom again. Here we've got four chlorine atoms and here when we keep dividing we'll get down to one chlorine atom and the atom again being the smallest building block. So an element made up of only one type of atom. Compounds. Compounds are made of two or more different types of atoms. So they are different types of atoms and they must be chemically combined. This is important that they have reacted together to form a new substance. So here I've got 
different atoms together and they're chemically combined and that's indicated here by the bonds between these particles and they're different atoms. So let's look at this. This is table salt, also known as the compound sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. When we look at sodium chloride, we can see here there's two different types of atoms that make it up. There are sodium atoms and there are chlorine atoms. Thus it's a compound because it contains two or more different types of atom. If we break that down, we can see it's still a compound because it contains two or more different types of atoms. It contains sodium atoms and chlorine atoms. If we look at the individual atom though, we'll now see that breaks down to one sodium atom or you can break it down to its individual chloride atoms or it should be chlorine atoms, that's a typo. Remember your atom is your smallest building block. So if you cut it down you'll break it into two different two different types of atom. Magnesium sulphide, this white powder here, is a compound. It consists of two or more different types of atoms magnesium atoms, Mg, and sulfur atoms, S. It's a compound because it's two or more different types of atoms and we can see that clearly here. The blue are magnesium, the yellow are sulfur. They are different types of atoms. Here we break it down and we can see we can break it down into magnesium atoms or we can break it down into sulfur atoms. Remember, an atom is the smallest building block. So the compound magnesium sulfide is made up of magnesium and sulfur atoms. Molecules. Molecules are two or more non-metals, or non-metal atoms, which are again chemically combined. They must have reacted with, with one another or be matched up with one another. Remember our periodic table, the orange here are the non-metals on the right hand side of the periodic table plus please remember that hydrogen is a non-metal. So any of these elements that match up or chemically combine with one another will become molecules. If they are different types of atoms they can still be called compounds but if they are non-metals together they are called molecules as well. Let's have a look at an example. H2O, commonly known as water, or dihydrogen, di meaning two, hydrogen is hydrogen, and oxide, which is oxygen. It looks like this. Mickey Mouse as they often call it. You've got one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. So it's a molecule. These are both non-metals. So a molecule is two or more non-metal atoms. Here's our oxygen atom and there's our hydrogen atom. So if we break it down we can still break it into those individual atoms which are the smallest building blocks. Carbon dioxide, CO2, I do like this slide. Carbon dioxide meaning two oxygens. Oxygen is a non-metal. Carbon is a non-metal. Therefore it's a molecule because there are two or more non-metal atoms chemically combined. Glucose C6H12O6. You can see here the oxygen of the red. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six oxygen. The carbon of the grey. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon, and we've got 12 of the blue hydrogens, and you can count those for yourself. Carbon is a non-metal, hydrogen is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal, thus they are a molecule because there are two or more non-metal atoms chemically combined. If we have a look here, we have a hydrogen and a hydrogen. There are two hydrogens chemically combined. 
When there's two or more non-metal atoms chemically combined, they're called molecules. Oxygen is a molecule. There are two non-metal atoms chemically combined. Here we have nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. Two or more non-metal atoms chemically combined. It's a molecule. Okay, last but not least are mixtures. Mixtures are two or more different substances or different chemicals that are not chemically combined. They are not chemically combined. No chemical reaction has happened. They are not chemically combined. So, we say substances because, this is a good example here, is your trail mix. You've got your fruit and your nuts. These haven't mixed together. They haven't been baked together. They haven't reacted together. They're still their individual particles. So they are a mixture. We can still separate them by physical means. They have not chemically combined. Let's have a look at a can of Sprite. What's your major ingredient in a can of Sprite? Water. So we have millions of water molecules floating around. Second major ingredient. You guessed it, sugar or glucose. Again, they float around dissolved in the water but they're not chemically combined these are still unique water molecules and still um, unique glucose molecules the other one is the gas what makes it all fizzy is carbon dioxide gas and again these three do not chemically combine they are just mixed together they could be separated by physical means if you were to leave or pour some Sprite into a glass and leave it. The first thing that would disappear without any chemical reactions is the carbon dioxide. Okay? Sprite goes flat. The second thing that would happen if you put it in the sun, for instance, the water would evaporate. What would it leave? Sugar or glucose sitting on the bottom. These are not chemically combined, so this is called a mixture.